Hi, I'm Gary Williams, the stadium announcer for the Oakland Raiders and a huge baseball fan. As a father of four boys, all of whom are baseball fanatics, I have had a lot of good memories at places like this. The older two are out of the house, but my youngest is 13 and he is still playing and I'm coaching and umpiring. And you know, it sounds cliche, but if you have kids, you know it's true. They do grow up very, very fast. And if you're lucky, you get to spend a lot of time with them doing what they love to do. And I have been very, very fortunate. Not everybody's had it so good. And sometimes life has a funny way of throwing you a curveball that you didn't see coming. Alex Solis, not much younger than my son's also a baseball fan, but as you know by now, he has had a bigger battle than most. He was diagnosed with uh, osteosarcoma back in May of this year. And uh, that, was, that was a pretty uh, rough thing for his mom and I. I didn't really know anything about it. I just saw people on TV with, who had cancer, and that's pretty much it. He's an extremely active kid, loves to play sports, loves to do everything every day, all day if he could. And um, to just tell him that he's not going to be able to do that anymore until we get through this, is, is I, it was really hard for him to, to accept. First thing that I thought was, am I going to die? Or, yeah, pretty much. That was a shock because I thought, you know, this is not supposed to happen to kids or anybody for that matter, but here, you know, it hasn't happened to anyone in my family and now my only son is possibly has a cancerous tumor in him. Next thing you know, we're starting chemo and it was crazy. Um, you know, he's got stuff dripping into him. We're living literally in the hospital. You know, his mom would take a day and then I'd take a day and we'd switch off, you know, every 24 hours. And living in the hospital is not fun, as some of you probably have done already or know people that have. You, you don't sleep. You know, there's something always beeping. Nurses are coming in. They're checking his vitals. He's got to, you know, go to the bathroom because they're hydrating him so much. What, what do you not like about chemo? Mm, makes me throw up and I don't feel good when I get it. Yeah, just makes, gives you a sick feeling all the time? Mm-hmm. It's pretty stressful. You know, by the time you go home the next day, your only thought is, how the heck did I get through this night? And I got to get back here tomorrow and do it all over again. And sometimes you're in the hospital for a week and sometimes it's three weeks. And you just keep going. You just push yourself and you just keep going. And then you wait to, till you get home to cry. You know, you can't do it in front of your child. You know, to see my son's hair fall out and then try to explain to him that it's just part of the process and it's just a, you know, it's a small sacrifice. And you know, we just try to find something funny. So I told him, you know, at least his is gonna grow back and mine's not. I don't like it because I had more hair than him and he has a bald spot and... What? <laughs> his left leg was amputated from the knee down. <clears throat> and uh, it was a successful surgery. Um, we were home about five days later and, and then at that point it's just pain management and getting up on crutches and trying to get him moving around as much as possible. Alex is a pretty, pretty awesome kid. He has a great attitude. He's never once complained about having his leg amputated. He has only complained about the pain meds because they taste disgusting. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. Nice job. And that's how it's done. That really? Really? Something I've learned about cancer and, and um, just being disabled in any way from just other stuff in our family is that attitude is everything. And that goes pretty much for everything in life. Your attitude's going to dictate your success or failure for the most part. And Alex has an attitude of, of he's just going to do it. And that's also an attitude I think that comes with kids more so than adults sometimes is they don't have time to think about how they're different or what they're missing. You know, they just focus on what they have and what they can do and then they go do it. We recently got into airsoft guns and so that, that got a little out of control but his buddies have them too. And so every time they come over, we're out in the backyard shooting everything moving and not moving and then we'll dress up in full gear 
and we'll have a two on two. That's basically two guys running around with no guns and the other two shooting at them and just see how much pain we can inflict. And, you know, he can't run yet because he doesn't have a prosthetic, but he just unloads. What's the first thing you want to do when you get your new leg? Skateboard. Skateboard. One of the things he brought up when we first talked about the leg amputation was he wanted to, he was wondering if he was going to be able to skateboard again. Hey Alex, what's up? It's Tony Hawk. Um, I heard all about what happened to you and I'm really sorry and I know that it seems like things are really difficult and daunting and challenging, but uh, if you want to skate, you can. You really can. You know, I know a few people that skate. I actually know a pro skater, John Comer. He has a uh, he has a prosthetic leg and he's amazing. He's pro. He's really, really good. And uh, you just have to work at it, you know? And, and it's not going to be easy at first. Um, but skating is not easy at first. So, you know, you have your own challenge, but I'm sure you can make it work and uh, you just got to be motivated. Go out there and do it. And um, you, you and Stumpy Jackson, <laughs> that's what your dad told me. Anyway, um, I just wanted you to know that things are, things are going to get better and uh, you got to be inspired and motivated and really enjoy yourself. Um, and I hope to see you someday. Later. You wonder if kids are going to look at him differently. Um, are they going to treat him differently? Is he going to feel different? Is he going to feel, you know, not as strong? Is he going to feel incomplete, you know? Is he going to develop insecurities? These are the things that you think of when you're faced with something like this. He doesn't get it. What don't I get? Everything. Whatever. You want three rounds in the octagon? You will tap out in the first round, I guarantee it. Essentially, once chemo's over and, uh, you know, we're done with a year of chemo, he can go back to doing what he wants to do and the things that he used to do, which means sports, you know, playing, having fun, doing whatever he wants. And having a prosthetic allows you that. It gives you that freedom to, to, to do those things. Part of learning about prosthetics and, and what they do is, what are the limitations? And what we found out was, you know, with the right equipment, you can pretty much do just about anything that you want. So that was a big deal for us, was to make sure um, or do what we could to try to get him the equipment that he needs. Uh, they got some pretty cool stuff out there that's going to allow him to pick up where he left off. And obviously, if you can imagine, for, for an 11-year-old kid, that's huge. Alex doesn't want to be a spectator. Won't you help him take his next step?